life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. I came so you can have life more abundant, life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. Spirit of the Lord is flowing through me, proclaiming the good news to all in me. Well, good morning and welcome to Z Church Live Interactive Fellowship in the Spirit of the Living God, coming to you live from. 24 time zones and beyond, because this is one family together in Christ, both in heaven and on earth, and you're part of it. And we invite you to be part of the fellowship today. In just a few minutes, we're going to be hearing a special message from our guest minister, Bishop Dick Burnell. A bishop is is the Lord's shepherd to his shepherds, a pastor to pastors, and we're privileged to, to have such a friend of Z Church, and we're looking forward with anticipation to hearing what the Lord has to say to us today, not just a man. This is the Lord's church, and we believe that he has a message for it through his bishop today. Um, first, we will be hearing um, an opening prayer and some worship uh, Joseph will lead us in a worship song, and I just want to encourage everyone, we're not entertaining you before the main message. We're inviting you to come into the flow of the Spirit and open the door to God to come in and speak to you today. So so enter into the fellowship and the prayer and the worship. Um, we are also taking prayer requests today, so anytime during the service, use the chat feature here in Zoom to submit a prayer request or send an email to info at zchurch.life. That's info at zchurch.life and submit your prayer request. And we'll address that later in the service. Um, also, there will be communion after the main message. So uh, step out if you need to, to, to run upstairs, get some, some juice and bread and be ready to participate in communion with us. And then stay around for the afterglow if you can. After the service looks like it's over, that's when we uh, will unmute our microphones and have a time to share and interact and get personally connected. And we hope you'll stay around and be a part of that as well. Um, that being said, it's time for Z Church. So, Anna, will you lead us in prayer? Thank you, Bob. Okay, Lord, thank you for your love that lasts forever and does not change. We give you this service so that all might be conducted in the power of your Holy Spirit. Minister to each listener with, with your anointing and power through the preaching of Bishop Bernal. Bernal, please bless him. Thank you, Father. Do all things in perfect time. time. You are always on time. And all glory and honor to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, please, uh, Joseph, lead us in worship. Thank you, Anna. This morning... I was wondering what song I was going to sing, but I kept thinking about triumph and marching in with triumph. And this song is Lion of Judah. This is all about triumph right here. Come on. All right, hey. Because he's the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah. The Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. The Lion the line of Judah. You are the great I am. You're the line of Judah. You rule over all the land. And you're holy, mighty, worthy of the glory. Holy, mighty, Everybody, 
was so nice, we got to do that twice. Let's go. The line of Judah. You're the light of Judah. You reign over everything. over everything. You're the light of Judah. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. Light of Judah. You rule over all the land. You're holy. Mighty. Worthy. right here you don't need a stepper you don't need a cycle you just need to come to z church and get your praise on come on help me lift them up said here comes the next set of your z aerobics lifting we gotta do another set man let's go hallelujah hey help me lift them up Amen. Very good. Joseph, that's good. I like the Z aerobics too. And uh, Pastor Loretta, good to see you. I miss you. I'm here I miss with Pastor you too. Dick in California. Yes. I think Bob's well, going to put us on a split screen here so we can be side by side. There we go. Look at that. Big hug. How are you, Pastor Larry? You're with our pastors. Yes, I am. And we're having yes. a good time. And we're looking forward to this. So um, I'm not going to make a lot of comments. I just want to uh, thank our Z team and everyone who's watching and listening. And you're in for a blessing. My pastor, Pastor Dick Burnell, is going to be sharing with us. And you're going to be blessed. Pastor Loretta, you have any comments? No, I'm just looking forward to the ministry, so I'm going to step away. Well, not step away, but anyway. <laughs> you look great, and thank you for being online. I really needed to see you, so uh, um, thanks. You're, you're beautiful, as always. And here's Pastor Dick, so everybody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. All right, everybody. Amen. Well, Loretta, I'm really... Loving that scarf. It's, uh, Thank it's you, beautiful. Pastor. Well, we're having a 
just having a great time, Carl and I, with uh, with Pastor Larry and and by the way, Loretta, uh, my son-in-law is inviting you, your son, for dinner this week. So hopefully, stuff is free, and we could we could see him and get together. That's uh, a blessing. I know, he, Thank I know you, he's Pastor. a bit of a workaholic, and, and <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, he is. But, yeah, he is a but it'd be great for him to break away. And we're pretty excited about. You know, we started a little Jubilee Church up here a few weeks ago with a handful of people and some family uh, friends. And uh, at, gosh, at our, our first little Easter, about 85 people showed up. We usually have 25, 35, 45 family and friends. And, and, but we have uh, well over 1,000 people watching. Uh, so our, our church is growing through uh, media and what have you. And we're excited about Larry being with us, Dr. L- Dr. Huggins, Pastor Ambassador Huggins. Tomorrow, it'll be about, we'll go live about 1045 California time. And then next week, uh, Pastor Huggins, Larry Lee, and I are doing a revival at Generations Church in uh, Eastern Sacramento area with Pastor Mark, my dear friend. We had breakfast with him yesterday. And then, uh, so we got a lot of things going on. So you guys could jump on tomorrow if you want, uh, about 1045. We're not able, uh, Joseph will understand this, but we're not able right now to show our 15 minutes of worship because of some copyright challenges with Facebook. We're working on that. We're going on YouTube and other uh, outlets. Uh, so uh, we start at 1030, but 1045 tomorrow, I will be introducing Pastor Larry and my kids, my kids, my grandkids are really excited about uh, about here and Larry. Well, let me look at my watch because, as my old friend Ray McCauley used to say, "Blessed are the short winded; they might be invited back." So, <laughs> not going to not going to keep you uh, long, but I'm praying in the Holy Ghost that what I'm going to share with you will be will be strong and strengthen your faith for the last. The last three Sundays at our little church, I've been talking about the Holy Spirit, his person, his power, his presence. And so what I'm going to do is I I condensed 90 minutes of teaching down to about 25 minutes, and I I, I kind of cherry-picked what I think are the highlights of of those three messages. So I'm going to start in the book of Genesis, because it's the first place we see the Holy Spirit at work. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, now this is not the beginning of God, this is the beginning of of things. In the beginning, God, Elohim, which is interesting, because Elohim, which is the primary word for God throughout the Old Testament, is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The literal definition of Elohim is the plural form of majesty. Gods, even when you're talking about foreign gods, Elohim. But here, G-O-D, speaking of the Father, the Son, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Let me just stop right there. This is Genesis 1, 1. One verse. One verse, God created the universe. Uni means one verse, like a verse in the Bible. It took God, how powerful is God? It took God one verse to create the universe. So why can't you and I stand on one verse to get our healing? One verse to get our blessing. One verse to have miracles happen. You and I don't need to memorize the whole Bible. Wish I did. Uh, we don't have we don't have to be all knowing. Sometimes all we need is one verse, not the whole chapter, not the whole book, but one verse. By his stripes I am healed. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Yeah. In other words, if God can create the universe with his word, one verse, there's times all we need is one verse. Amen. You can say amen if you want to. It's all good. Uh, amen, man. This is good. <laughs> yeah, Larry, Larry's amen to me over here at the quarter. <laughs> he's my quarter man. If you know a little bit about boxing, he's my quarter man today. Uh, verse 2. The earth was without form and void. Two very interesting words. 
bohu and tohu in, in Hebrew. I'll, I'll unwrap that in just a moment. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Notice, no form, no void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. Then the Spirit of God came, was hovering over the face of the deep. Now, this is a mystery. Why was the earth so messed up? Did God create the earth perfect and then Lucifer cast out of heaven, kind of trash the place? Because bohu and tohu means chaos, misery, confusion. Uh, I mean, this was a this is a mess. Something may have happened. We don't know. We can only suggest, be subjective. We don't know. Is is was this when Lucifer was cast out, or did God, or did God create the earth this way and slowly, slowly, it it evolved, if I may, to a place to where God's ready for man. So my point being, watch, the Spirit of God is sent by the Father to bring order out of chaos. Because from then on, we see not creation, but we see restoration of this planet to where, which at one time was covered by water, and then the earth come, and then and then vegetables and fruit trees and so on and so forth, and and then the 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 garden in Eden. A lot of people, a lot of people believe that Eden totally was a garden. No, no, no. The garden was in Eden. It was a it was a part of Eden. Uh, Eden could have been wasteland, but there was this there was this little paradise, a little slice of heaven, to where man was going to be planted, Adam first, and then, and then, and then Eve. But my, my first point is, the Holy Spirit is attracted to chaos. The Holy Spirit brought light to darkness. Now, there's a lot of people that we know who are in deep darkness. They're depressed, maybe even suicidal, and it's, 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 it's deep. It's overwhelming. It might be an addiction. It might be uh, it, might, it, it might be they're grieving, they're going through something. But listen, the Holy Spirit is attracted to our mess, to our chaos, and he will bring and has and, and will continue to bring order and blessing no matter how jacked up. Can I say, is that okay to say that? No matter how, no matter how messed up. No matter, I already did. No matter how messed up. Our situ- it takes, sometimes it takes a crisis to bring us to Christ. In my, my testimony, Carla was dying, bleeding to death. And actually, she actually passed away and went to heaven. And uh, I prayed, and God sent her back. So it was a crisis. It was a dark, deep, dark crisis that I was facing, Carla was facing, that got us into what we're doing today. All right. Now, let me, let me uh, I want to talk about his person for, for just a, a bit. I'm going to go over to the Gospel of John, and I, I think I'm going to go to, yeah, chapter 14. So I'm going to talk about his person and his personality. All right, here we go. I'm in verse 12. Most assuredly, this is Jesus talking now. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works. Oh, wow. Then he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, verse 13, that I will do the Father, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, he'll do it. If you keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father. Watch. I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper. The word there is parakletos. I'm sure Pastor Huggins has unwrapped that probably way more better than I ever can. But it's a beautiful, beautiful Greek word. One called alongside to help. Uh, counselor, comforter, corrector, convictor at times, and and all of those, all those wonderful, wonderful adjectives. And he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. That's very important. Then the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor, know, nor, nor knows him, him. Notice the Holy Spirit, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit he. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit him who will dwell with you and me forever. So the Holy Spirit is not a thing. A a pastor 
a pastor, I was reading about this pastor whose seven-year-old daughter said, uh, what is the Holy Spirit? What, what is, and he goes, honey, honey, it's not what is the Holy Spirit, is who is the Holy Spirit? Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person, Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, and we'll get into, we'll get into his, his feelings. The Holy Spirit has, that's the reason we have feelings. We're created in the image and likeness of God. The Holy Spirit has feelings of joy, uh, has feelings of jealousy. It's in the Bible. The, 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 the Holy Spirit grieves. I mean, you can grieve the Holy Spirit. So all the emotions, you know, Jesus was tempted with everything we've ever been tempted with. The Holy Spirit has felt everything that we have felt because we are created in the image of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let me jump over to uh, the next chapter, chapter 15, verse 26. Chapter 15, verse 26. But when the helper comes, the paracletus comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth. So what is the Holy Spirit? If I was answering that little seven-year-old daughter of that pastor, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is truth. One word, truth. All truth. The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. That's the Holy Spirit. He is called the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father and will glorify me. So I spent I spent about 30, 35 minutes at our church just really driving home the point that your best friend, like people, people, yes, people, where, where is Jesus? Oh, Jesus is it, lives in my heart. Well, my Bible says Jesus is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. Literally, yeah, literally, Jesus is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. The part of God that is in you is the Spirit of God. Amen. It's the Holy Amen. Spirit lives in us. And and when we get to heaven, of course, we will see we will see the Lord face to face and and all of that. But my best friend. My best, I have some really, I have three really close friends, Larry Huggins, Steve Hage, and Rick Hawkins, who, by the way, is fighting leukemia right now and just got off chemo yesterday, finally, and we're praying for his, his life to be extended many, many, many years. But I have, these are my three closest compadres, my homies, if you will, is Larry Huggins, my oldest friend, Steve Hage. 30, 30 plus years, Rick, Rick, Rick Hawkins, 20 years. But my best, best, my best friend is the Holy Spirit, Holy Amen. is the Holy Ghost. And he's your best friend. I talk to the Holy Ghost. I wake up every morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. At my age, <laughs> at my age, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm still here. All right. Let's do something today. Let's change your life. Let's help somebody. Let's be a blessing. I talk to the Holy Ghost all day long, all, all the time. I'm always talking to the Holy Ghost. You can call it prayer if you want to, but I'm, I'm always talking. And there's times he really talks to me. We'll get into that. All right. Let me go to John 20 after the resurrection. And uh, let me, John 20, 20, chapter 20, verse 20. When he had said this, he showed his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Well, hello. Amen. So Jesus said to them, peace be to you, as the Father has sent me, I send you. And then after he said this, and when he had said this, he breathed on them. Just like, watch now, just like he breathed on the face of Adam. I know the Bible says his nostrils. It's the exact same word as face. When, when Jesus, I was explaining this uh, to one of my grandsons, uh, he says, what's the difference between God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit? I said, well, in a nutshell, God says it, Jesus does it, the Holy Spirit tells us how. God says it, Jesus does it. I believe it's uh, uh, Colossians and Hebrews where all things were made by him and for him. Anything made was made by him and for him. Amen. And, and all the glory goes, you know, to the to the Father and 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 of course to the Lord, but but the it was actually who we call Jesus, the Son, built the body, built the body out of red clay of Adam. That's how you really say his name, Ah, which is the phonetic sound of God, Ah, Dom. But he he breathed the Holy Spirit 
into this lump of clay, this inanimate object, and all of a sudden he became a living soul. So here we have something similar because until Jesus was crucified, uh, buried, resurrected, ascended, nobody could be born again. Well, now this is after all that. And so he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So this is, this is Jesus in them. This is called regeneration, born again. Uh, this is the, like the Bible calls it the well of our salvation, where you could, you could dip down into the well of your salvation, bring out all the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Every believer, every born again believer has the Holy Spirit in them. Yes. We're going to say, yes. we're going to move into the, the power. So let's go over to Acts chapter 1. Of course, this, this is after, after the resurrection. You know, he spent, he spent 40 days. He spent 40 days uh, on the earth, and then another 10 days leading up to Pentecost. We'll get to that in just a moment. But in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, now let me back up to verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you restore this time the kingdom to Israel? And he said, it's not for you to know. <laughs> You know, Jesus could be brutally blunt at times, yeah. like, like wrong, wrong question. Yeah. Uh, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But in other words, uh, let's focus on the right now. Let's focus on what's important right now. Quit, quit worrying about the rapture or the second coming. Let's, let's talk about what's happening right now. You shall receive power. Now, as you've been taught very well, there's two basic words for power. Exousia, which means authority, authority, delegated authority. But this word is dunamis, which most of you know, is miracle working power, explosive power, a, a, a force. Uh, we get the English word, as you know, dynamite uh, from the, the Greek word dunamis. So Jesus is talking about miracle working power, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Now he's talking to people that have the Holy Ghost in them, but now he's talking about the Holy Ghost on them. And then he says, you will be witnesses, basically powerful witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I'll show you a little something, and maybe pastor has done this already, but, Here's uh, this this plastic bottle is Dick Brunel. Inside this plastic bottle is water. This is the Holy Spirit in me. On February the 10th, 1977, I accepted Christ as my Lord, Jesus as the Lord, and the Holy Spirit gave me life. I was born again. Well, October, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, October the 8th, 1978, a year and a half later, I went to a little Pentecostal charismatic church and got called forward, and the Holy Spirit came upon me. So watch, watch, watch now. This is the Holy Spirit in me. This is the Holy Spirit on me. Good. Now, Praise God. the Holy Spirit in me regenerates me. It's for regeneration, develops the fruit of the Spirit, all of that. But the Holy Spirit on me is for administration. It's for ministry. The Holy Spirit in me Good. is a well of living water. But the Holy Spirit, when it comes on me, that well turns into an artesian. That well explodes and becomes a river to where it'll take me and take blessing, where I could lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I could cast Praise out devils. I, could, I, can, I, I, I had blind eyes open in India. I, had, I cast out devils. So the, the Holy Spirit on us is the power of the Holy Spirit to do greater things than even Jesus said. 
and it's for it's a it's a river. A, a well, as you know, is isolated. It's it's in a little town, a well, but a river runs through all kinds of different places. Like the Jordan runs through all kinds of different cities, but every little town had a well. When I got born again, I had the well of salvation. But on October the eighth, nineteen seventy eight, when the Holy Ghost came on me. Boom shakala, baby. Boom shakala. <laughs> it's Amen. All right. Amen. God is ready to send me to San Jose, to start Jubilee, to the to the ends of the earth, to bring blessing and healing and miracles and what have you. You still with me? All right. Let's go Amen. to uh, Amen. 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 Let's go to Acts chapter two. We're here. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, you know the story. They they 120, which is a fascinating number. 120 gathered, Mary, a lot of the women. Uh, but, the, you know, I'll tell you what bothers me a little bit, if I may, a little, a, little, a little sidebar. How many people, the Bible, the Bible tells us, how many people did Jesus appear to during that 40-day period? 500. Not 500 people who believed in him, but only 120 showed up in the upper room. I call that the, I call that the 25% rule. Wow, that's good. It's like tomorrow at church. You know, I had a, I had a church at one time. Uh, Joseph probably remembers, and some of some of you that came during our our, our hate from ninety from ninety eight to to two thousand eight. The recession hit, but we had twenty one thousand plus members. Members on a really good Sunday would have eight thousand people. For, well, Friday night Sunday, and so sometimes sometimes I wouldn't see people for two. I loved them. They were wonderful people, but they were they were busy, too busy to come to church. My Just God. busy, busy, busy. Five hundred, five five hundred people saw the resurrected Christ. They saw the scar. They saw, but when when he told them all to come to the upper room, one hundred and twenty. Wow. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. Yeah, Pastor Larry just said that's amazing, but. I bet I bet the other 380 that didn't show up regretted it because boy they missed the boat didn't they? Yeah. One of the greatest days in the history yeah. of humanity. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were they were all they were all with one accord. Unity is very very powerful, very powerful in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as what? A rushing mighty wind. What was that? That was the breath of God. That was the Amen. breath. As as God breathed on Adam, as God, as the Lord Jesus breathed on his disciples, here God is breathing on the start of the church. Catch that. The church was birthed with a sound. With a sound. The universe was created with the sound of God's voice, saying, Light be, light was. Not the sun that came four days after after creation, sun and the moon and all that. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. This is the, the explosive breath of God sounded like a tornado. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Let me stop right there. Notice, God wanted the house filled before he was going to fill people. Joseph, you're going to love this. Why is it? Every church service, usually, usually, every church I've ever been to around the world, we have 30, maybe 40 minutes of worship. I'll tell you why. Before the preacher starts throwing the seed of the word out, we want to invite the presence of God to fill the house. Yes. With this Amen. kind of presence. Amen. That's, why, that's why we worship, because a lot of people, including yours truly, have come to church ticked off having a bad fight with your wife or your husband or, or something really bad news. And, and you're, and you're coming to church because you, you're the pastor. You got to come to church. You're, you're coming to church. And I don't know how many times about 15 minutes into worship and I'm, I'm upset. I'm mad. I'm angry. Carl and I having a big old, you know, big old, whatever, <laughs> but about 10, 15 minutes of worship, you know, the Old Testament says Judah plows, Judah plows. Judah means praise. Praise knows how to plow a hardened heart. Amen. Ooh, that's good. Fallow ground. So as we're yes. as we're worshiping God, 
Praise God. All of a sudden, the fallow ground is broken. And then we begin to water the fallow ground with tears. And and uh, John Osteen, my old friend John Osteen, God rest his soul, told the story about him and Dodie. I mean, they were almost getting in a fist fight on the way to church. Oh, they were arguing over something. I mean, they were like, and and not holding hands, and they're walking into church mad, mad at each other. And they got in the presence of God. He said, we both fell on our face. <laughs> we're laying there. We reach, we hold each other's hand to squeeze it. Thanks, all, they, all they needed to take that mess, to, to take all that anger and to take all that, you know, opinion and whatever. And I'm right, you're wrong and all that. And soon, But as soon as they got in the house, which was already filled with this presence of God because of the worship, inviting, inviting the Holy Ghost to come, not as a guest, it's his house anyway. To, 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 and, and so here in the, in the book of Acts, it says that the Spirit of God first filled the house before the people were filled. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire and said, which means two, cloven, two, and it said upon each one of them, and they were all, now, now the people are being filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right, that's enough scriptures. Let me tell a couple of stories. I was saved, water in me. I was saved February the 10th, 1977, Baptist Church, wonderful people. And I was there for a year and a half. Never missed a Sunday, rarely missed Wednesday night, Sunday night. <clears throat> I was a door-to-door witness. I mean, I was, I, was on, I was on fire. I was so happy that I had God in my life and all my sins were forgiven. I believed all, I believed all that. I believed it. I believed it. Carla, Carla was raised Baptist her whole life, said she was a little girl, and she wanted the power. She wanted more power. So she started going to this little charismatic church. And Carla got the Carla got the Holy Ghost in the shower. She said she was looking at the the water, and and she started speaking in tongues. Uh, well, actually, this this happened this happened before I was saved. And I, and I came home one day, and she comes running out to the truck, honey, 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 crying. I can speak in tongues. So I thought, good God, I don't understand you in English. Now I got to put up with. <laughs> Another language? Anyway. This is beautiful. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so she she finally got me to go to this church, which, you know, we had a beautiful church, pretty. This, this little church was a little country church. And I thought, oh, boy, you know, whatever. When are they going to bring the snakes out and all that, you know, because I had heard some things. But the pastor was a... Uh, he had this Irish brogue, he had this big cherub face, pink cheeks, and, and I just, I kind of liked him. I just kind of liked him looking at him. I just kind of liked this guy. There's 50, maybe 40 people there that 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 evening service. And he said, uh, God just told me somebody here needs the Holy Ghost. And, he's, and he looks and he's smiling, because everybody else was, she la ba ba, he la ba la, even my wife. And I'm like this, I'm, I'm looking like a Baptist, you know. <laughs> Rolling my eyes like, oh brother, where's the Prozac? You know, and oh man, these people need these people need help. And I and Carla's doing the same. He la ba ba. I thought, oh, I'm married to one of them. And he goes and he points, and he said, uh, Dick. I thought, how's he know my name? Well, Carla told me later that she told him I'm bringing my husband Dick, and and let's believe God, he'll get the Holy Ghost. So I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And so it got my attention, Dick. That's your name, Dick. Yeah. He said, would you like the Holy Ghost? And Carla's pushing me. I, I'm looking at her like, like, what are you doing? So I got up. Slowly, I walked up to him. And then all of a sudden, I feel all these hands. Now, I, where I come from, you don't walk up behind me or you're going you're gonna to get punched. I'm an old iron worker. And all of a sudden, I got these guys laying hands on the back of my head. I'm like, I'm looking around like, who are these guys? But the, this beautiful, smiling former Catholic priest, by the way, Vince O'Shaughnessy, former Roman Catholic priest from Ireland, now a Pentecostal pastor, preacher, who married a nun. It's another story for another day. And he said, Dick, would you like the Holy Ghost? I guess. 
he laid hands on me. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, it started like a bunch of butterflies right here. And, and, and I'm, I'm like, whoa. And I felt it come up. And all of a sudden, I started speaking. Now, don't laugh. You can laugh if you want to. It was like I was ordering the special at a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Praise God. Well, yeah, I just went, huh? And, and, and I went, what the, you know, what the heaven? And, and, and I started laughing. And the more I laughed, the more it was coming out louder and louder. Carl was spinning around. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. I thought, I don't know if I want it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. And, and everybody, people falling out. And, and the pastor, everybody lifted their hands. But I, the, the feeling it gave me, I loved listening to my or my Oriental Asian, whatever it was, kind of, uh, I don't know, it was so mysterious. It was like, I, I, I was like, well, you know, blah, 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 you know, here it's coming out. So we went home. This is October, this is October the 8th, 1978. Carlos, we go home. I'm so, I'm so wired up. I'm so high. I can't sleep. Now I got to get up at five in the morning, drive to Sacramento. This is 90, 90, 91 miles back and forth every day, Monday through Friday, remodeling the Capitol Dome of the Rotunda because it got damaged in a big earthquake. And so I got to get up at 4.30, get in my truck at five, be at the job at seven. But I couldn't sleep I'm because I'm, I was afraid if, I, if I, I'd wake up, I'd, I wouldn't have it anymore. So we pretty much stayed up all, on our knees by the bed, and Carla, bless her heart, she goes, honey, honey, honey. She goes, you can stop and start it anytime you want. The spirit is subject to the, and, and so I, I stop. And she, go ahead, and here it come again. She says, they stop. Because I couldn't, I couldn't remember these, these words. I couldn't make these words up. And we're laughing and we're crying. How do you feel, honey? I said, I feel alive like never before. So finally, I got a couple hours sleep. Now, what I'm about to tell you, I know I know uh, Larry Huggins will believe this because we were talking about angels the other night because here I live in uh, Loomis, California, and Larry's most amazing angelic experience happened in the little town of Loomis many years ago where two angels visited him, and he shared it with the Cardozas and Carl and I the other night at dinner. So I, I always stopped and got coffee at this little foster freeze and then I'd head down, I'd head down. Paradise is about 2,400 feet up in the Sierras. I head down to the valley and I'm on my way, Marysville, down to Sacramento. Every day, Monday through Friday. I just went down, I'm down Clark Road, heading towards Highway 70, Highway 65 eventually. It's dark. All of a sudden, my, my, truck, light, my truck lights up, kind of an amber soft and sitting next to me is somebody and in this air wow. dick prepare yourself i've called you and then the light disappeared it's dark again i squeeze the steering wheel i i'm my little truck i i'm, I'm almost broke it my hair was standing up. I slowly, I slowly did this. What the, what the? Somebody, some, something was sitting next to me talking to me that brought light into the, into to the truck. So I rolled the window down and I was peeking out over the, the Eastern Sierra mountains. And there's a little strip of orange where the sun was making its way up for sunrise. And so I rolled my window down. It was a chilly, a chilly fall morning. And I said, well, Lord, here, I'm, here am I. Send me wherever. Years later, I'm reading the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter six. Here am I, Lord, send me. Hey, <laughs> of course that was written 2,700 years ago. Hey, you stole my line. That's what I said. <laughs> that was, watch now. That changed my life. 
being born again changed my life, but this really changed my life and the direction of my life because I knew my days being an iron worker, which I loved. I loved my job. I loved my crew. I loved my guys. My boss was like, we hunted fish together, vacation together. And I knew that was over. God had called me to be what? I don't know. The next year, June of 1979, we loaded up little uh, two-year-old Sarah, my wife, and headed for Tulsa, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, where I met your pastor, Larry, the first Sunday at Faith Christian Fellowship. In fact, the first book, the first book I bought was The Blood Speaks by Larry Huggins. The first speaker I heard at Faith Christian Fellowship was Larry Huggins. Like, I like this guy. I like, I like his. And the Cardozas said, oh, he's our favorite. Because the Cardozas, Richard went, was working for Kenneth Hagen now. Richard went to Rama 78. His wife, Carl, and I, and, and her brother, we went to Rama 1979, graduated in 80. So we would go to FCF and, and Pastor Larry, basically, and Buddy and the others, Bob Daniels. We loved them all, but we really, we really enjoyed Larry's prophetic gift and teaching gift and stories. You know, he's a great storyteller. But that's, that's how, that's how the Holy Spirit, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about hours, hours after I was baptized with fire and power, all of a sudden, now God, now God, God didn't call me. I know this sounds kind of funny, but while I was going to that Baptist church, I felt no unction to be a preacher, a pastor, a minister. I just wanted to be a blessing to my church, pay my tithes. It took a little while for me to get that part of it. Because <laughs> Carla, honey, 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 now that you're saved, we need to start paying our tithes. I said, our what? Tithes. I thought, like necktie. Listen, the crowd I ran with, the Hells Angels, the rodeo crowd, the construction crowd, not one person in any of our bars said, you know, we all need to start paying our tithes. I never, I never heard that word, <laughs> tithes. I said, I said, what are you talking about? She goes, oh, honey, uh, we need to give God 10%. I said, what? 10% of what? She goes, everything. I said, I'm buying you, Satan, in Jesus' name. I didn't say that. I think I, I said, honey, Carla, I said, I got house payment, truck payment, union dues. I said, we got bills. I got child support for Adam. I got 10%. And she goes, well, honey, God will bless us if we do. So it, it took me a few months to, I'm going to tell you a little story. I'll never forget. I cleared about $280 a week if I worked 40 hours. We only got paid when we worked. If it rained, we didn't get paid. Stay home, vacation, you didn't get paid. So a good week, a good week, I'd bring home about $283. I'll never forget writing that check on the, on the net. <laughs> like $28 or 30 cents. I'll never forget putting that in the plate. Remember the plate? And, and it's like I'm waving goodbye to money with a tear, you know. Uh -huh. Within two weeks, my boss calls me. Dick, we decided to give you a dollar an hour raise and a pickup truck and a credit card. You're doing a good Praise job. God. And Carly goes, see? Uh -huh. Amen. Goes, see? And I went, see what? Amen. See, we've been paying our tithes for a couple of weeks. I said, no, no, I, no, I deserve that. I, I'm a hard worker. She goes, that's true. But the Lord moved upon your boss to give you a raise, a $40 a week raise and a, and a credit card. So, I mean, it's probably like a hundred dollar, right? Cause I drove every place, you know, and yeah, of course gas was only, you know, whatever back then, but I got thinking about it. Wow. Maybe that's the way it works. When you give to God, and it comes back 30, 60, 100 fold. So don't forget to pay your tithes today and your offering. Let me, let me wrap this up with uh, one more story about his presence. I get asked this a lot. Can I feel the Holy Spirit? I go, absolutely. You ever, you ever have an overwhelming feel of joy? You ever have a, a feeling of compassion? You ever have a you ever, you ever have a feeling like your, your conscience? You think it's your conscience talking to you, but it's the Holy Spirit talking to your conscience that's talking to you. That's why we hear. That's why we always hear. Or when the Holy Spirit talks to you, He does it in your voice because you believe your voice more than any other voice. 
You believe your voice more than any other voice. So the Holy Spirit uses your conscience. So when you hear the Holy Spirit, you're really hearing your voice, but it's the Holy Spirit doing the talking. Like do something you don't want to do. Go someplace you don't want to go. Uh, help somebody you don't even really like. Uh, do blah, blah, blah. That's, that's, that's the Holy Spirit moving on us to do things we just in the natural seem crazy. I'll tell you one story that really blesses my wife about, I don't know how long it was after I was filled with the spirit, but I'm, I had a dog named Trouble, little Brittany. I, I was a, a duck hunter, bird hunter, and I had a, I had a little retriever, Brittany Spaniel, and we called him Trouble because he was a little bit of trouble. That's before I understood, be careful with what you call people. They might, they might become that. So I'm sitting there watching TV, Trouble, and Carla's cooking one of her dishes. And she goes, honey, dinner's almost ready. And I get this overwhelming feeling to take trouble for a walk. And I can't shake it. I said, I'll be right back. I'm gonna just take trouble outside. Well, he already went potty outside. She goes, honey, honey, dinner will be ready in five, 10 minutes. I go, yeah, I'll be back, I'll be back. So I put the leash on him and I'm walking down this little country road where we lived up in the hills. And then I just felt to go a little farther down, down, it dipped down and then came up to another street behind us. And so I'm just walking along and all of a sudden trouble starts barking and he, he's pointing actually, and he's, he's pointing and barking. I'm like, what, are you, what are you barking at? I thought, man, deer. I thought we had a lot of deer. And there's this little girl, this little five-year-old girl standing up against a tree, holding uh, some books or a book. This is in the forest, and it's in the evening. And I said, hi, hi. And she didn't move. I said, are you okay? She started crying. I'm lost. What happened was, it was the first day of school, kindergarten. She got on the bus. She thought she saw her house, got off the bus. The bus left. It wasn't her house. So she got turned around. This was like four in the afternoon, now, now five. And it's where, it's, you know, it's, it's toward, it's where it gets dark earlier. And, and, and she froze out of fear and just should have been there all night long. And who knows what would have happened to that little girl. So I, I said, come on, honey, we'll, we'll get you home. Well, I, I walked up to the street above us. I saw a, a Butte County Sheriff, green and kind of gold, and he started, and I'm waving, waving, because he's making it like a turn. I'm waving, waving, waving at him. And he backs up, he comes. I said, are you looking for a little? He goes, oh, my. He said, are we? The whole town's looking for her. I said, well, she was down in the gully. And I said, my dog found her. And he said, oh, he got on the phone. All, all's good. We, we got her. Of course, her mother's panicking and, and, and what have you. So the little, he took her, the girl, and and. and he said, tell the nice man, thank you. And she was just, she was panicking, you know, and I said, that's okay, that's okay. So I went back home and I told Carla, Carla goes, honey, that was the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Ghost. Amen. Moving on you. Amen. To do something that was, that in the, in the natural dinner's ready, you're hungry. Why would you want to take your dog for a walk when she, you know, she's going to, have the food ready in five minutes. But that's 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 the Holy Spirit. The, 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 when his presence, so again, again, let me wrap this up. Beautiful. The Holy Spirit is a person with a personality. He's yes. your best friend. The yes. Holy Spirit is powerful, yes. powerful. When he comes on you and the evidence is you're speaking in other tongues. You have a, you have a, a prayer language you can, you can pray to the Father. You could, you could speak. I think Larry knows a story about a Rama graduate. I'll, I'll wrap this up. A Rama graduate, I think his name, St. Louis. I'll think of his name in a minute. And he was doing laundry in a laundromat. And he's singing in the spirit. A family come in. I believe it was Armenian. I believe they were Armenian. And they start talking to him in their language. He's, he says, I'm sorry. 
I don't understand what you're saying. She goes, well, of course you do. You're singing in our language. He goes, I am. I was. What was I? She goes, oh. She goes, you were, you were glorifying God. Amazing. Amazing what happens Amen. when we're singing, when we're praying. Jude says, build up your holy, your most holy faith praying. And the Holy Ghost Roman says, when you know not what to pray, you're so overwhelmed with grief, you can't even articulate in English or Spanish or, or what have you. Just start, just start praying in the Holy Ghost. Drives the devil crazy because he has no idea what you're saying, but God knows every word you're saying. Well, I hope that helped you a little bit talking about my best friend. And speaking about my best friend, my other, my other buddy friend is about to come. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise Everybody God. Unmute yeah. yourselves and give the Lord a yes. praise. Yes. Praise God. Yeah, that. Praise Thank God. you, Jesus. So many nuggets. God. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are so honored to have Bishop Bernal with us today, Amen. and even more so to have the Holy Spirit with us. And while uh, Bishop was talking about the Holy Spirit and you know how He's wooing us and pursuing us, I thought about I thought about my childhood. Pastor Dick talked about the little girl who was lost and. The whole town was out looking for her. Uh, I had that experience when I was young. Uh, I had the whole town out looking for me, the sheriff, the police, the fire department. And I want to talk to you, my friend, uh, whoever is listening and wherever. Heaven is out looking for you right now. The angels of God, the Holy Spirit, uh, his eyes are going to and fro on the earth and he's looking for you. And you say, well, I thought he knew everything. He does, but he's looking for a time in your life when you're going to say yes to him and say yes to the Holy Spirit. He's looking for that, that meeting place, that connection, when you invite him into your heart, that special divine connection. And Father, I thank you for everyone who's watching and listening, and they're hoping for that divine connection. They need that divine connection. Well, they can have that divine connection right now by faith. Dear heart, I want to talk to you. If all you'll do is whisper, Jesus, come into my heart, he'll do it right then. Wash away your sin, you'll be born again. All you have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart and mean it. And he's going to come into your heart. He's standing at the door of your heart knocking. He's ready to come in. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord. So after you invite him in, declare that he is your Lord. And you will, and well, your life will change. Praise God. Would you do that right now? I receive you as my Lord. Very good. Listen, uh, Pastor Dick started talking about the Holy, how the Holy Spirit led him to return his tithes and offerings to God. He did that very young in his life and in the ministry. And of course, Pastor Carla encouraged him after after they were married and after Pastor Dick was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, she encouraged him to take another step and begin to repay the tithes and offerings to God and give offerings. I'm a believer in tithes and offerings. My wife and I are tithers and, and we give offerings on top of the tithe. Our Z Church here are tithers and they give offerings. <laughs> we have a very generous church, people watching online give to us, even though they're not seated on this uh, this panel, this screen that you're looking at. They're with us in the spirit and they're watching on YouTube and Facebook and other things. And we have a divine connection in the Holy Spirit. And we have many, many givers out there who, who want to bless Z Church. And I'm going to encourage you today, if you have a tithe or offering for the Lord and you want to put it into Z Church, we are here to receive that, to bless it, to offer it up to Jesus, and to call in a miracle blessing for you and upon you. And I'm going to ask you right now to think about what the Holy Spirit would have you to do in the tithes and the offerings. Now in the chat, or maybe in the, in the subtitles, we're going to put a link to jubileelegacy.org, should you should the Holy Spirit instruct you to give directly to Bishop Bernal? Jubaseelegacy.org, and they have a little menu there. Likewise, zchurch.life. 
is how you contribute to us. You go on the home page, pull down the giving menu, and, and it's very, very simple. We also have text to give and PayPal and, and other ways that you can give. So we're going to ask you right now to listen to the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for everyone who's listening right now, that they will hear your instructions about tithes and offerings. Many believers have not taken the step of tithes and offerings. Maybe they've taken the step of the Holy Spirit, but not this other step, which is very important. So, Father, I thank you for believers taking a step, advancing in the knowledge of your kingdom and how it works. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that everyone who wants to give a special seed, a miracle offering, they can do it today. So we have tithes and we have offerings. And we thank you for speaking to people about being obedient to the tithe and following the Holy Spirit in your offering. Father, thank you in Jesus' name for all the wonderful people who sow into your kingdom and they do it through Z Church. We bless them. We pray your highest and best. We pray that they prosper, have plenty for their family, plenty for their friends, plenty left over to give again to every good work in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there's going to be a screen in the video uh, giving further instructions about giving. And uh, when we come back, Pastor Loretta, I want you to minister the people or appoint uh, Terry to minister the people in prayer. All right, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Loretta. Thank you so much for your gifts, for your tithes and your offerings. We have prayed over it and we believe that God is giving you a bountiful harvest. First, we're going to ask Christine if she will lead us in our worship of the Lord's table. And right after that, Terry, will you join me in uh, reading the prayer request and prayer? Yes. Christine. Amen. Um, the scripture God gave me today is John chapter 6, starting with 37. Those who come to me, I will not reject. For I came from heaven to do the Father's will and not my own. And this is the Father's will, that I should not lose one that he has given to me, and that I should raise them up on the last day. And verse 54 says, any who eat my flesh and drink my blood shall have eternal life. And I will raise that person up on the last day. So as we take communion today, I'd like to encourage you to remember what Christ went through so that you could have all that heaven has for you and that he was raised on the third day, but also the promise that he will raise each one of us up on the last day. So whether you're in the grave or not, you're gonna be raised up and join with him in the heavenlies. So Luke, 22 is Jesus during the Passover when he had taken bread 
and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup saying, this cup was poured out just for you. This do in remembrance of me. And we shall all be raised up. Amen. 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 That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Christine. Praise God. And again, thank God for past, for our pastor, Bishop Richard Burnell. What a beautiful message. And talking about the Holy Spirit, our best friend. Wow. Praise God. A friend that sticks closer than a brother. A friend that will never leave you, never forsake you. That will always be there. You know, I love, uh, there's a lady that I just love her. Her name is Louise Brock. And she would always talk about the Holy Spirit. And she would say how that the Holy Spirit would be right there as your guide. But when you messed up, he didn't leave you. He just changed hat and did damage control. That's what a friend does. A friend has your back for whatever reason, however it is, never judging. And I love what Pastor uh, Dick Burnell said that I almost said Bishop Pastor. <laughs> and so that's who he is. And that um, how that the Holy Spirit is, he will convict, but he said that it's a convincing. It's not a condemning. It's a convincing. You need to do this. You need help. You know, we are so blessed to have the Holy Spirit in us. And as pastor said, um, and on us, that was so revelatory for me, just that whole, the Holy Spirit in us, but now there is that administration of the Holy Spirit on us. Praise God. Again, when you unmute yourselves, uh, Z Church, and let's just give God glory for the word that has been spoken over us. Praise God. Yes, thank Praise you. God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise Praise God. Praise we thank God for our pastor. We thank God for Pastor Larry Huggins. Praise God. Praise God. And praise God. And one more thing, uh, Pastor Sharon prayed that the word that would be spoken would, we all would have ears to hear and that it would bring forth a harvest in our lives. Praise God. Well, that being said, Terry, do we have any prayer requests? Yes, we do. Uh, Anne, who was here on with us, if she's still there, we want to pray for her healing and health. And that was Anne Marie. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, definitely. Well, why don't you start out, Terry, praying for her? And uh, of okay. course, our Z team is right there supporting your prayer. Well, Father, we just thank you for Anne Marie. We pray for her for complete healing and for her health to be completely restored. Lord, we just ask you for your wisdom that she will know what steps to take. And we thank you for. Uh, just downloading to her what needs to be done and for your healing power at work in her body. Amen. 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 And you know, anyone else that has that same prayer request, as Dick Mills would always say, just say, take it, that's mine. You don't have to wait for someone to call you specifically. You can just say, that's mine, because it, healing is the bread of God's children. It's for us Amen. to have. Praise God. Terry, do we have any more prayer requests? I would like to us to pray for Rick Hawkins that has, uh, Bishop Burnell mentioned. Yes, definitely. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm wondering if I think Pastor, Pastor Larry, are you still there? They may have left. Well, you know what? I'm going to ask Elder Bob if he will pray for Pastor Rick Hawkins, would you do that, sir? Pastor Rick Hawkins, our our brother. Um, well, I haven't had the privilege of meeting yet, but I will. And I just praise you, sir, and thank you for giving us a brother and for calling him to ministry and service to so many. And we just speak over him health. 
with your stripes, Jesus, Pastor Rick Hawkins was healed. And we agree with that here in the earth and believe your power of your Holy Spirit comes forth to manifest the, the work you did on the cross and that's in your word. And that healing power works in his body of flesh here on the earth and is used to serve you all of his days in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And anyone Praise else that is standing uh, for the healing from any type of disease, whether it's cancer or any other type of disease, you must know that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is greater than all names. And as Elder Bob has prayed and we have joined with him, you have to understand that the prayers of a righteous man, woman, boy, or girl makes much power available, dynamic in its working. So we know that healing is taking place. Praise God. Amen. Terry, do we have any more prayer requests? Yes, we would like to pray for your uh, second cousin, yes. Donna Turner. Yes, uh, in, uh, yes if I may, excuse me for cutting you off. No, you're uh, fine, Terry. go ahead. Please excuse me. Um, uh, Donna T Turner is my mother's first cousin, and that would make her my second cousin. And she's in her 90s, I believe. And uh, she had a, a, a serious fall. She asked for prayer. So I am going to ask Pastor Sharon if she will pray for my second cousin, uh, Donna Turner. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Loretta's cousin, um, Donna, you know her, Lord, and I thank you that you're working in her body. Thank you for a full recovery from this fall. In the name of Jesus, we speak life, the divine life of God into her, and we thank you for the quickening spirit, your Holy Spirit, that quickens our mortal bodies in the name of Jesus. Thank you for completing a work in her body, and we praise you for it now. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. You know, before uh, I have any more prayer requests, I just want to say that, uh, you know, we have gotten some testimonies. First of all, I have permission from Pastor Anna Maria that her uh, niece, uh, we have been praying for uh, Pastor Anna Maria's sister, um, um, what is it, uh, is uh, Maria Isabel, and that the Lord healed her, and she even shared with me that she went back to the doctor, and um, there is no trace of cancer, and right. you know, that's just, you know, we have prayed, and I just thank God that God is answering yes. prayer, Hallelujah. but there was another miracle that happened right after that, and that is, uh, I met uh, the beautiful daughter, um, Alejandra Maria, Maria Alejandra, and um, the, she had just had a really hard time with God. Let's just be honest. How many of us either have had a hard time with God or we have members of our family who are angry at God for some reason or another? And she was just very uh, unhappy because, um, um, I'm not to get into a lot of uh, the family business, but you know, there was a divorce and she just felt that God didn't whatever. But during the miracle service, <laughs> I'm getting overwhelmed. But if you remember, we had a miracle service two weeks or so ago. During the miracle service, because the healing that uh, uh, Isabel Maria received, her daughter it was softened to the things of God and took communion with us. That's a miracle. Yes. <laughs> that's God. a miracle. Ooh, I mean, that's yes. just Thank you for a sharing miracle that. in God. You know, a lot of times we think about physical bodies, but when God does something to the heart, heart. Amen. only God can change a heart. Hallelujah. Praise God, you know. Amen. So I just thank God for that. And um, also, I, um, I'm going to ask... Uh, uh, Pastor Javier, if he will pray, because 
his niece asked us to pray for her church in um, Peru. I, th- I guess there's some issues that are going on. You may know more about it, but she asked for prayer for her pastor and the different ones. So uh, either Mahatma or uh, Ana mm-hmm. Maria can pray. You. Uh, either one. Okay, please uh, give us more details. Uh, you are talking about a uh, church in Peru? Um, I she, she's your niece, so I don't know, but um, she just mm-hmm. prayed and asked, uh, Terry, would you read that, please? I sent the request to you. Uh, I thought it was Maria that used to be on with us, Maria Sanchez Rosado. I don't know her married name now, forgive oh, me. Oh, you know what? That might be her. Well, you know what? <laughs> That's okay. Hallelujah. We have a lot of Marias around here. <laughs> I can't but, keep up with all the Marias. <laughs> <laughs> but Javier, you still can pray. Pray in Spanish, whatever. You know, okay, that's what okay. it is. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Amado Padre. Thank you, Jesus. So what happens Amado. to live TV, huh? <laughs> oh, Amado Padre. Thank you, Padre. Tú nos amas tanto. Tú amas tanto al mundo. Tú quieres llevar tu mensaje de esperanza y de vida a todos lados. Y para ellos usas a tus hijos. Tú estás usando a María Sánchez en México, en su iglesia, para bendecir, para llevar tu bendición, tu salvación a otros. Bendice ese ministerio, fortalécelo. Haz que tu Espíritu Santo se mueva en esa iglesia, que sean habladas tus palabras y que mucha gente sea salvada que haya mucho fruto de todas las semillas que están siendo sembradas ahí. Bendices iglesia con recursos, con gente y con tu unción. En el nombre de Jesucristo, nuestro Señor. Amén y amén. 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 Thank you so much, Terry, for uh, getting that cleared up. Praise God. Um, thank, and thank you so much uh, for praying, Javier, because you know what? There's no distance in what the Holy Spirit can do. He has covered the entire world, the universe. So praise God. Or do we have any more before we uh, bring this? That's all I see right now, Pastor. Thank you. I think I saw Elder Bob. Did you raise your hand? Did you have something? Okay. Everyone is said, praise God. Well, I'm going to, I don't know who takes it next. Maybe that's Terry, but thank you so much for all that you have done, Z Church. You are such a blessing to us all. Blessings. Amen. I believe it's time for announcements. Okay, thank you. Just a few announcements today. Um, Please check out our website and view past services, read our blogs, and leave a prayer request. You can do that on our website. If you have any interest on being on the Z team, just send an email to info at zchurch.life. Now stick around and join us for the Afterglow today with Chris Holmes. Amen. Amen.